today we will be talking about error handling and some of us, uh, maybe a big part, think that, oh, here we go again, but we will be talking about it until all of us will understand how important they are. So let's uh, start. Um, let's start from today that errors are values. Uh, do all of you understand what does it mean? Actually, it means that we need to accept them and live with them. And it's like remainder when you divide four into seven or five into or two into five. And during my demo, I will share the interesting info with you in the bottom as useful links. Uh, the first one you can see uh, in the bottom, it's an uh, article about errors and article about uh, errors are values from Rob Pike. And the second one is uh, an interesting YouTube video from uh, GopherCon from Dave Cheney about a uh, worldwide uh, Golang uh, proverb that don't just check errors, handle them gracefully. And a small example of acceptance uh, that error are values. We need uh, to um, we need to um, have these main rules as our uh, plan for working with them. And uh, first of all, we need to handle all the error stuff gracefully log in our errors uh, to focus on the main troubles and uh, to make our app uh, to 100% integrity with all built-in features using even new errors in Go uh, 1.13. And please make sure your errors was lost in the past with uh, success. <laughs> uh, but I always am asked uh, what does gracefully mean and here i had only one only one proverb don't panic now i am ready to share my pain with you uh, because uh, for me it's the most stupid way to handle errors with a panic and i am interested in uh, do you know that uh, Panic, it's also a way to handle errors, not to shut down the application or exit some function methods. It's also a way to handle errors. But um, as you can see, it's not the good way because uh, I understand that we don't need to ignore the errors and uh, better don't need to ignore panics. I know that feel when all, for example, method in DB layer have such stuff inside. And when my lovely QC asked me what the hell is going on on my demo end, I used to get this panic called uh, from this small function which I uh, get a lot of shit uh, in the stack trace and during my existing on a project, I removed a big part of panics, but uh, handling errors and logging them is still the first priority in our tech depth. I think my teammates will agree with me. And they, I, I think that we, uh, you feel our pain. So in case you will think that uh, this will never cause to your method, uh, think again and think twice. Uh, we also thought that Kyle is smart enough. Uh, here, I would like to advise you uh, to learn the next info from the useful link in the bottom. It's also an article with uh, practical examples about unhandled errors in Go. And there uh, we can see uh, that some errors can be safely ignored and uh, other errors and that uh, might be worth to keep an eye on by masking them in the examples. And of course, there are errors that can be expected uh, as usually, um, and that uh, errors uh, still need to be handled properly. So uh, here, I just want you to feel my pain. Uh, this is real casing and uh, real cases and nothing else. Uh, usually when we got uh, some errors, some panics or crashes on our app, uh, we asked our DevOps to provide some logs for us because we have uh, nothing. 
and we hope that our DevOps will help us, but we just get something like this and we uh, encourage with uh, that. So uh, often we just get something like you can see on the slide and it takes a lot of time to discover where the error was and why it uh, it is not handled properly gracefully. So um, here I would like to start giving some recommendations from my side. Uh, I decided to start uh, with the custom errors um, from example. Uh, here we can see the type error which implements method error and return some boom uh, string. Uh, also we can see the function that return an uh, error, my error type. Then we just call it uh, in the sequence and we get something like this. Uh, it's an uh, unexpected error, we get boom and uh, you don't even understand how much it can help you. Not that boom exactly, but something you really need, uh, something you, re you really want to see there. For example, line of code or maybe some components, uh, some custom message you will create will make your life easier and not only for you as for newcomers or for your colleagues or for temporarily senior staff which uh, just need to help you with something. Okay, something else about errors, it's logging them. Uh, here also is a practical example. Uh, let's take a look at that function that handles the error. Uh, here in the main, the call to download is made and then the error is checked. If uh, there is an error, it's handled by logging it with specific uh, format option you can see on the slide. And uh, uh, this will generate a stack trace with all the context we need. This uh, example and uh, also um, some information about uh, logging uh, errors and uh, um, logging into handling errors maybe, uh, you can see uh, on this link. Um, it's also an article from William Kennedy about design philosophy on logging. Uh, it's worth reading because uh, there are two um, main points as handling errors and logging errors about the, uh, their coupling and with uh, practical examples. Uh, so the idiomatic uh, stack trace will be something like this, which give us a little bit information about error we logged before and we uh, also can see that um, we can go through some information, not only get uh, some panic or understanding that something went wrong. And maybe the final points in my presentation um, really will be something easy and helpful. Uh, you can see that um, Till uh, 1.13 we have, we had uh, something like this when we assert error value uh, to something and now we have a function called is which do this stuff all inside and only the name will explain what this function used to do and uh, also I have a questions uh, have you already used the, this func and uh, which problems for you it covers, if yes? Is anyone use new errors from 1.13? Well, 1.13 is quite new version of Go and a lot of clients partners still just not, not 
trying to go to this version of Go. So most of our projects, for example, are on Go 1, 1.12. Okay, but the latest version of Go is 1.14. Uh, yeah, it's like... Yes, Something and we missed. still have a lot of projects that depends on that depend on uh, one and twelve, and you know to to re rework all of that or our handling logic inside of our projects. That it can take a lot of efforts for now. But it, it's interesting. Is there any effective way to to move from old or handling strategies to to a new one? can be interesting. So Rodian, as far as I remember, you have implemented such, uh, <laughs> almost such. Uh, um, Thompson looks like this. Yes. <laughs> but but, but our project. I'm not, not, so, not so good as, as yeah. these types of words. Yeah. Yeah, we are on the project do use that, uh, the 13 version of Go and also, the new errors as well with wrapping. So because of the complex logic of the fails we have and what we need to do on the failure. So yeah, we do, the, we do use it on one of our services. It's really great because I know really uh, a lot of projects that uh, really did not implement it uh, one dot 13 for today even so um also um we let's continue let's continue uh, <laughs> the next features from 1.13 and the next one will be um, errors s which uh, can assert not only the value but the type and here uh, i would like to give you a real example um, from the working experience, not my, uh, but uh, also <laughs> our teammate. Uh, let's imagine that uh, we are marshalling our JSON and the JSON is invalid. Um, and then the server close any connections because uh, the app uh, cannot work with uh, invalid JSON, but the logic need to do that and using uh, is and using s uh, we can create uh, such a condition uh, that handles negative cases and uh, the logic works, prop works properly with that uh, while without this condition any, any error uh, any parsing error will be a signal to close some connections uh, so uh, i recommend you to use new features as uh, a part of us uh, almost do. Um, also, the last maybe feature um, is the unwrapping errors. It sounds great and better works. And um, about this, I can um, tell you that um, I really get um, encouraged when I uh, cannot get the detail from uh, the errors I get. So uh, I would like you to share the one uh, best practice in my reality. When we are adding some context to our errors, not just making them custom, but adding some texts to understand what we are working, what we are finding. finding. And uh, the best practice for receiving the error with context looks like something something like this when uh, my reality is something like that and uh, how funny it won't be it's not uh, it's better the pain not the funny example so um I would like you to uh, read the article in the bottom. It's a recommendation when to add context to errors because not uh, every error needed to be described as uh, this best practice. And um, this is the end of my presentation. I would like to give you a small conclusion to sum up this. 
uh, don't just check errors, uh, check errors, handle them gracefully. It means that uh, create uh, different custom errors using new built-in features and um, add more context, uh, including logging the errors and just adding some details into your error. Uh, don't panic and uh, live with uh, Go <laughs> built-in features. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Uh, here you can see the useful links which I was sharing with you during my presentations. If you have any questions, I am ready to answer it. Or many, any some propositions, ideas, or real cases. I have a question to Paolo because, like Radion mentioned, that it's very uh, painful to switch to new errors, and I'm wondering, does it was very uh, difficult to use new errors approach in your project? No, it wasn't. I uh, just create one wrapper, um, so I used it all over the places because we already have uh, some custom errors that uh, includes uh, stack trace and uh, details about the context. So I just uh, merged those two things. And yeah, it works pretty well. Okay, thank you. Yeah, because from my experience, uh, by the way, this example from the slide, it's from real project as well. And uh, I just use it this uh, error logic in one case that Adriana has described uh, just to handle the situation. Yeah, because uh, when we try to unmarshal JSON, if we close the connection, it will also trigger the error, the same as like invalid JSON. And I need somehow to distinct all to, uh, these two ways of logic. So you can add new errors in your in your project without any changes in the project and just adding more proper error handling in the place where it's required. 